Despite being predictable, magic and supernatural phenomena are essential to the stories in this genre. I've brought you a gift. What is it? It's a crystal. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fantasy movie cliches. For this list, we've chosen the most common fantasy cliches that are overused or regurgitated over and over on the big screen. So, you won't take warning, eh? All the worse for you, then. Number 10, Haunted Forests. I don't like this forest. It's... it's dark and... Creepy. Nothing is scarier than wandering into a creepy forest. It's not that bad. Well, I'm not saying I'd like to build a summer home here, but the trees are actually quite lovely. For that reason, it must be included in a fantasy adventure, and the heroes must cross it in order to continue their perilous journey. I've been to that forest. I'm not going back. You will be rewarded. Usually housing menacing creatures or unknown dangers, the haunted woods are used as an obstacle to overcome. In many instances, the spooky forest is also home to the main villain. Take your army to the haunted forest and bring me that girl and her dog. Do what you like with the others, but I want her alive and unharmed. Whatever the case, be prepared to flee from or fight some dangerous monsters in there. Number 9. Old English Accents You can fight from everywhere, even from the tail. I want to try it. What's the obsession with the English accent when it comes to fantasy movies? Merry making in the hall brings the devil, Grendel. Apparently, all people from mythical lands and fantastical settings require this accent. I am so happy to meet you, Willa Lovegood. How do you know my name? Whether pleasing to thine ears or shudder-inducing, depending on who speaketh, the accent has just somehow become synonymous with fantasy movies. I want my brother back, please, if it's all the same. What's said is said. But... I didn't mean it. No matter what the conflict may be, there's one thing that both good guys and bad guys can agree on. Ye old English accents are the way to go. Wait, wait, I can defeat them. There's only 150 of them. Yes, yes, it'll be easy. We have a good job. Shit. Number eight, magic spells. All who look upon her fall under her spell. What would a grand adventure be without the use of some magic? And so it was. Morgana gained sorcerer's most dangerous spell, known as the Rising. Whether it's to inflict some damage, protect a friend, or to help out with some chores, magic spells are a common cliche found in the fantasy genre. Both good guys and bad guys often have the ability to use magic, and sometimes they'll duel it out to see who is the superior spellcaster. <laughs> Magic is a staple in fantasy movies, offering awe-inspiring visuals and grandiose power that makes our imaginations run rampant. I love magic. Number seven, different races. We are helping hands. You're hurting. Would you like us to let go? <laughs> when giving life to a fantasy world, it's a good idea to think outside the box and create races beyond humans. Dumbledore sent me to parley with the giants. Giants? It's thus common to have a diverse cast of characters from different races, such as elves, dwarves, goblins, and giants. Put me down! It's a cliche because it works. People love to see how these different types of humanoid or even non-humanoid beings interact with us humans. As is the case with a lot of these entries, different races can help or hinder the hero's path. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Number six, magical items. Give it a wave. Apparently not. Spells are always good, but having items with magical properties is almost a necessity when creating a fantasy film. They can aid in battle, cure some ailment, or even help with travel. Mind your head. <laughs> hey guys! Guys, why the long faces? Some items are more powerful than others, though. 
mystic artifacts that can grant their owners enormous power are usually highly sought after by both the baddies and our heroes. The Sorcerer's Stone is a legendary substance with astonishing powers. It'll transform any metal into pure gold and produces the elixir of life, which will make the drink from mortal. Many times, the magical item will bring about the end of the main villain, or in the wrong hands, can bring about the end of the world. One ring to rule them all. Number five, mythical creatures. That is a big dragon. Oh. In addition to different races, it's a good idea to include some fabled creatures that don't exist in our boring world into your fantasy movie. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Enter dragons, unicorns, and all sorts of mythical creatures to interact with our cast of characters, both good and evil. What is light without dark? A lot of times, the mythical creature is an enemy that brings forth much destruction and chaos that needs to be felt by our heroes. Other times, it helps the heroes on their journey by providing a means of travel or guidance. But one thing's for sure, mythical creatures are not to be messed with. Number four, the wise old wizard. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. How is our poor, inexperienced hero supposed to embark on a dangerous journey without any sort of training or guidance? Not to worry, the next cliche on our list will take care of that. Well, I happen to be a wizard, a soothsayer, a prognosticator. I have the power to see into the future. The wise old wizard, most likely bearded and generally in robes, usually possessing a magic staff and wizard's hat, will teach any amateur the art of magic or sword fighting, and will also provide invaluable life lessons and a sense of security. Ever put it on, for the agents of the Dark Lord will be drawn to its power. He may sometimes be tough, but it's only because he's a father figure who cares. He's far better off growing up away from all of that. Until he is ready. Number three, the Dark Lord. <laughs> For every hero, there must be a villain. You poor simple fools thinking you could defeat me. No, the baddie can't just be a thief or a criminal. In fantasy movies, the more evil and menacing, the better. The Dark Lord adds the necessary conflict and danger to the story, providing the hero with the perfect foil. They'll speak only of how you begged for death, and I, being a merciful lord, obliged. A godlike figure with immense power and a number of followers, the Dark Lord usually has his own domain, kingdom, or impenetrable fortress, with a goal of conquering the rest of the land and becoming ruler, normally by spreading fear, terror, and panic. Number two, the prophecy. The prophecy says you must find the shard, the crystal shard. If there's going to be a confrontation between good and evil, you know that there's a prophecy out there predicting the outcome. A special one with face of yellow will make the peace of resistance find from its hiding breath. Foretelling how the good guys will triumph and who will be the one to bring an end to the bad guys' reign of terror, the prophecy is a staple in fantasy movies that is usually said by some fortune teller, witch, or some old hag. I need that prophecy. The good guys usually find strength and hope from this foreshadowing, while bad guys scoff and generally do everything in their power to prevent the prophecy from coming true. The prophecy said, neither one can live while the other one survives. Before we reveal our number one fantasy movie cliche, here are some honorable mentions. There are markings. It's some form of elvish. I can't read it. There are few who can. Since then, our land has been ruled by Galbatorix. He crushed all rebellion, including the freedom fighters known as the Varden. Mr. Smee! Pipe up the crew! I see. Pipe up the crew. Pipe up the crew. Our hands on deck! King Edmund. The just. 
through the radiant southern sun, Queen Susan, the gentle. Number one, the chosen one. Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry, um, kidding. The chosen one is our number one. Usually orphaned, sometimes a farm boy, the chosen one is the only character in the whole story that is able to bring down the Dark Lord, restore order to the kingdom, and save the world. The Chosen One isn't necessarily alone to deal with the task at hand. There's always help to be had, usually from the childhood best friend or the wise old wizard. Evil is stirring in Mordor. The ring has awoken. It's heard its master's call. However, at the end of the day, the Chosen One will predictably succeed and be the sole owner of the title of Savior. The prophecy is fulfilled. We are again one. Do you agree with our list? That about right. Which fantasy movie cliche do you think is overused? If you value your freedom, you'll do as I say. For more awesome top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, for what it's worth, this has been about the greatest 15 minutes of my life.